Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. My name is Martin Warwick and I'm very pleased to be talking with Margaret Kiosi, who is Distinguished Network Architect at at and Labs. Margaret, welcome. I'd like to begin by asking you about what is the value proposition of SDN and NFE virtualization? How does it fit together? Because these are two different technologies designed to solve different problems and they're sort of supposed to meet at infinity, but we're getting closer and closer to that infinite point, are we not? Mm -hmm. Well, the value proposition is reduction of cycle time of instantiating new services and new infrastructures. Um, that's probably the biggest value proposition. Um, the, how they fit together is interesting. In at and as we were, a few of us understood the value of, two, of the two, the rest of the company had a struggle. People understood virtualization pretty easily, but the value of SDN with virtualization didn't, didn't become apparent until a lot of the projects in at and started virtualizing. And the value is virtualization allows you to, to separate your software from your hardware and the hardware to be a COTS environment that can be shared among multiple different applications. And once you virtualize, then you start getting into the next level of cadence. Once it's virtualized, you start having these trigger points, I call it, that causes the virtual, the BNF, in this case, to move. And so in a virtualized environment, you focus on compute storage and maybe the NIC card in a virtualized environment. But when you start to move, due to a failure, due to a trigger on congestion, which causes you to scale out, or even due to a customer asking for a service, which causes a VNF to get instantiated. You need access, network access to those um, applications, and so that's where the SDN comes in, to set up the network connectivity. So together with virtualization, the cloud orchestrators that support the virtualization, and then related to the movement of the network that the SDN manages, you can, in, 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 in a symbiotic relationship, move your application, instantiate it in a cloud arena, and then move the, the access to that application through an SDN um, platform. Thank you. What are the challenges for the industry converging on this kind of change? How hard is it, and how far along the path is the industry? So the challenge is everyone's putting together different pieces of SDN and virtualization in different ways. Functionally, at a high level, it all looks the same, but when you look at the details, when you really try to implement this, and the interaction between a service orchestrator with a cloud orchestrator related to a controller, everyone's actually coming up with very different flows. You've got separate, each corporation that's a user coming up with their different flows. You've got vendors coming up with their different flows, and we're really all over the map. And so for the industry to truly evolve more quickly and capitalize on this self-provisioning environment that we're all, that really what SDN and virtualization allows us to do, we need to get on the same page of the use cases that actually influences what the flows are and the interactions between a orchestrator, a service orchestrator, a cloud orchestrator, and a controller. And so that's probably our biggest challenge. And that's why we're viewing, or at least at and is viewing OPNFE as a venue to help us flush out and get convergence on what those flows should be. So OPNFV is a sort of, not necessarily the gateway, but the venue for convergence, you think? Yes. OPNFV is a forum. In fact, the only industry forum that's focused on a NFE platform that helps us to instantiate these services more quickly. It's the only forum where it's public. It's a forum where, right, I mean, if we did not have OPNFV, what's happening today is every carrier or every set of vendors, we're doing these, these experiments and these, these, well, some of it's also rolling out services, but in a small group basis, in a NDA basis. And so, you know, you might have at and with its set of vendors trying to do this. Then you might have Telefonica with theirs, Deutsche Telekom with theirs. But we're all coming up doing, basically solving the same problem, but maybe doing it a different way based on our, our specific cultures and, and, and priorities. And OPNFV is the goal is to solve this in a public forum um, and in an open source forum and, and hopefully to allow us as an industry, whether you're the, the supplier or you're the user, to, to converge on 
a set of use cases, a set of flows, and in the end, code that we can actually implement and use quickly. So within the OPNFV, how close are you to sort of realizing this, this vision? Because much has been made when NFV first appeared. Much was made of the fact that it was a carrier-driven technology and requirement we wouldn't result in vendor lock-in, it would be open completely. But we've seen over the past year, a bit more perhaps, the emergence of not necessarily standard proprietorial standards, but there are, again, the usual story, there are many actual differences between the different solutions coming from different vendors. Yes. So <laughs> the standard process is a journey, and it's not trivial which is the reason why we created OpenFV, as a way to validate or quickly get to code some of the visions that comes out of the standards body. So the goal is to actually turn this industry to a more agile process, mm. not to go down the waterfall where you create a standard, you spend months, maybe years, you know, crossing the T's, dotting the I's. It's more of like you come up with a simple framework, you end up validating it through software, and then you iterate. AT and T by going into Domain 2.0 and trying to get our network. We, our goal is to get 75% of our network onto an SDN virtualization platform. And what we're finding as we're doing the or de developing our own products, actually, uh, the platform for this space. And as we're going through this, we're actually doing a very agile development. We pretty much put very quickly at a high level what the flows are. Then we start developing. We fine tune it, and we uh, and we keep doing this iteration. The industry needs to do the same type of iteration. Um, but OPNFP right now is at the baby steps. We're doing the pieces that are not as um, earth shattering and not as maybe capture headlines. And it's actually very basic, but it's something that's so fundamental that the industry needs. So what's our first release focus on is actually a build environment to be able to build all these pieces and to actually then test some basic tests to make sure it works, to do a build of, and we, and we just focused on a, a very small subset just to get going and just to get our processes in place. So the first is to build ODL, a certain version of ODL with certain versions of OpenStack, with certain pieces of OpenStack, with the OVSs and so forth of the world, to build that platform, have some basic tests to make sure it pretty much works, and then go from there. So if you listen, nobody talks about that in an architecture and a standards body sort of thing because it's the digging the, the, the foundation. It's not even putting the foundation in place, it's actually digging the dirt out so we can put a foundation in place. But if you don't dig that, that hole, you're not gonna basically build the house. And the house is our platform is what we want that we're all gonna use, but we have to get to the basics. And so those are the baby steps that we're doing now, but they're so fundamental that if we get this right, then we get to the next level of building that foundation. And once the foundation is solid, then we get to the next level, building the next level of the house, the first floor, the second floor, and so forth. Good analogy, Margaret Kiyoshi. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.